Welcome back to this week's version of the Monday Monologue. And like I said in the video last week, put in the comments what you'd like to see this about each week. And it might be the topic for next week's Monday Monologue. Oak Mountain Man asked, can we see something about using the 110 volt Made in China tube amps in US with our 120 volts? And sure, let's talk about that. I've got uh, a Made in China amp that I've been using for a while now. And I noticed in the Amazon comments for the amp that a lot of people are complaining about it eating tubes and overheating and smoke coming out of it after a couple of months. And I'm not surprised. One of the things we have to understand about tube amplifiers, they're very different on how they deal with different line voltages versus solid state gear. Solid state equipment operates at a much lower voltage. And so when the, an amplifier or some other electronic device is designed to work on 110 volts, it's really not a big deal if it runs on 120 or 125 because they have a solid state voltage regulator inside them that once the transformer pulls the voltage down to 35 volts or 15 volts or whatever the voltage is the electronics operate on, there's a solid state voltage regulator that nails the voltage on the money so that the electronics operate properly even if there's some variety in or some variation in the line voltage. Tube amplifiers don't work like that. There's no voltage regulator inside a tube amplifier. The transformer works off of a winding ratio and let's just say for example to keep it simple uh, it's got a 4 to 1 winding ratio. So that means that if it's got 110 volts and it's designed for the Chinese market or the transformers wind wound for that, it puts out 440 volts. Well, if you take that same amplifier and plug it in to US house current, which is at a minimum 120 volts, now you've got 480 volts coming out of the transformer. Not only does that make the plate current run higher than it was ever designed to, which if the amplifier was designed where it's really pushing the tubes, it may push them past what the design spec of the tube is. It also changes the voltage drop across the cathode resistor, which changes the bias on the tube, which changes the operating point and could very likely change the way the amp sounds or what kind of, how much volume it puts out. All kinds of problems can arise from that. The other thing that happens is the heater voltage. If it's running at 6.3 volts on 110, if you raise it 10%, and it's running at 121, you now have a heater voltage that's at right at 7 volts, which is out of spec for any 6.3 volt tube. So I'm not surprised at all that people are having problems with their made in China amps, which some of them are fairly decent. I'll give them that. They can sound really nice. But the problem is they've got 110 volt primary transformers. So there's only a couple of solutions that really work reasonably well. One of them, which I don't feel is a really good long-term solution, is a Variac. And these have a big knob on the top that you can set the voltage that they output, but the problem with these is if somebody, they're for one thing, they're really big and heavy. And if somebody comes over and messes with the knob, 
they can throw the voltage off and actually make it higher than line voltage. Most of them will output 10 to 20 percent higher than the line voltage. If you're going to buy a new one, all the reasonably priced ones are made in China. And right here it says input 110 volts. So these numbers on the top don't mean anything because it's got a 110 volt wound primary in the Variac as well. So while these are really nice to have, if you're working on tube amps to bring up a new one that you're building slowly, or if you're restoring an old amp to reform the capacitors, you can slowly bring the voltage up on it. These are wonderful to have, but as far as a solution for uh, having a 110 volt tube amplifier, I don't think that's a great solution. The next down the line is APC makes this little box and it's called a, let me look on the front, a Line R1200. And this is a solid state voltage regulator. It has a switch on the back, right, right here on the back, that you can set it to uh, 110, 120, or 127. If you put this on 110 volts, plug it in the wall, plug your device in the back, you'll get 110 volts going into your tube amp all's well. These are about 60 bucks. This is, you know, jam up, UL listed, really nice product that also acts as a very good surge suppressor in case you have voltage spikes. It'll keep them from getting into your amplifier. And it's probably the only solution that I found that's commercially available. The cheapest and in some ways the best solution is to use what's called a bucking transformer. And if you look on the internet, there's and search bucking transformer, you'll see projects where people build them in really nice boxes that show you how to wire them up with electrical outlets and fuses or circuit breakers and all that kind of stuff. I decided to make a very simple one using a, you'll have to excuse Dolly, she's, she's down here wanting some petting. I made a real simple one using a Hammond 12-volt uh, center tap transformer, 4-amp. It's a 166N12 is the model I used. I took a short extension cord, cut it in two, Splice the wiring to the transformer. I put a little piece of felt on the bottom so I could put it on the shelf. This sits on the shelf behind the amplifier so it's not seen. Nobody can touch it. And this end plugs in the wall. The cord for the amp plugs in here. You could also do it with the, with the cord that comes with the amplifier so it'll plug directly into the amplifier. And again, look on the internet. You'll see wiring diagrams of how to wire this thing. Make sure that the, the third pin, the ground, passes through to here and that you keep the hot and the neutral correct in relationship to the that plug and this plug. And it'll drop the voltage 12 volts. And in my house, it's about 123 volts. And so it pulls it down to 111, which is perfectly fine. They're quiet. If you get a four amp one, it'll run fairly cool and you won't have to worry about it getting hot. And this will make those amplifiers live. If you don't get the voltage back down to 110 and you just keep running at 120 volts, it's going to burn up tubes. It could smoke, catch on fire, who knows what. It wasn't designed for that. And again, Tube amplifiers are very different than solid state as far as operating for voltages they're not designed for. And I know some of these China websites and even in the Amazon ads, they say they'll operate on anything from 110 to 120 volts. That's just not possible. That's just a marketing lie. So if you're going to run one of those amplifiers, either get a bucking transformer and wire it up or get one of these little APC boxes and all will be good with the world. 
So that's it for today's video. If you've got an idea of what you would like to see in next week's video, put it in the comments below. If you like my videos, subscribe to my channel. Obviously like the video. The button's right down here somewhere. And we'll see you next week on The Monday Monologue.